That was beautiful, Molly. Great job. All right, first off, I have to say that Anna and I were having a conversation earlier, and we were both talking about how we've spoken in front of a lot of people, but we've never been quite so nervous. And Anna was an Aquitanian princess, and I guess I was involved with FFA, so you could call me an FFA princess. princess. <laughs> <laughs> and I've given a lot of speeches in front of a lot of people um, at the U of M for state convention in front of thousands of people, and I don't know, this is something that I care a lot more about and that I'm a lot more nervous for. Um, Deb asked me to share my story and a little message with it as well, and I, I don't normally just share something about me, I always like to talk about some other people too and kind of give half and half, so I'll try and give both sides of that and see how it applies to you as well. So my story kind of begins um, with my family. I love my family to death, and uh, I grew up Catholic, um, both my mom and dad's side were Catholic, and um, we went to church every so often, and I would go to religion classes, and grew up, you know, with the average upbringing, probably like a lot of you guys have, gone to church a few weekends, gone to your religion classes, but I never really felt like I had connected with God, and this is something that I haven't really shared before either with people. Um, I've written it out, but I've never really had a good conversation about it. So, um, when I got to probably about 10th grade, one of my friends had invited me to go to church with him at uh, Trinity Lutheran ELCA Church. And I said, okay, I mean, I guess it'll just be in the church like every other church that I go to. And uh, so I ended up going with him, and, you know, I kind of thought, this isn't that bad. I mean, it's like church, but this is church. You know, this is pretty good. And... Uh, I started, I think, to actually feel like there was some sort of community to where I was at. And I had nothing against Catholic teachings. I, I love the sacredness and the tradition of um, Catholicism, and, but it just never really connected with me like it did for some other people. So I kept going to um, Trinity Lutheran Church, and I really liked it. And before I knew it, I just was kind of getting involved in things. I was helping with Sunday school music. I was. Um, in the in the spirit choir, who you'll hear from later, and got to meet lots of great people, like Molly, who did a great job singing. And uh, I just slowly started to build this um, community and this fellowship with the people around me that were at Trinity Lutheran Church, and it was something that I had always asked for. And so probably my junior year, when we get confirmed to, in the Catholic Church, I was still going to religion classes and still being involved kind of in both places. After like the first week of um, religious ed classes that year, I, just, I was like, I can't do this. I don't know how, how I'm gonna be able to be confirmed. I don't feel like I'm truly a part of this church. So that Sunday, I went to a church at Trinity Lutheran, and um, in between services, we always had this social hour where we get to hang out with people, and at one point, I kind of just slipped away from a conversation that I was having and I felt called to go into the sanctuary. And there was nobody in there, it was just dark, and it was already all set up for the next service. So I went in there and I, I just started to pray. <laughs> and I don't know, I never really connected with God, I don't think, until that moment. And just like, in that moment, I felt like I needed God's help. And I don't know what it was for, I just needed to have that relationship with God. And I had started connecting with him through the people at my church, but I needed to have that solid relationship with him. And I think that I heard God's voice. And it was probably a little different than Anna's voice that she heard. But I heard him speak to me as well. So then, Trinity truly became my home, and I felt like I had actually connected with God. Uh, leaving from, or from high school to go to college was really hard for me. Uh, I really enjoyed making that decision to go to ELCA, Trinity Lutheran Church, and then leaving it was harder than making that decision to go there in the first place. So I went to school, and one of my FFA friends, Brooke, for some of the you guys that know her, she invited me to Hope Community Church, which is just kind of this outlandish type of church, I think, for Sleepy Eye, but it's amazing. It's just, it's so contemporary and modern that it connects with a lot of college students that go um, from our campus. So I went to it, and the first week, I just kind of had that small connection again that I did when I went to Trinity Lutheran Church. And then I kept going, and I slowly started to really build that relationship again. 
and I think I had found another church that I wanted to go to. So that slowly became my home too. Right up in the cities, I had a home church in the cities and in CPI. But you know, I didn't really feel like I was a Christian yet. And around that time in the fall of um, my college first freshman year, um, I felt like I needed to start running again. And my sister had asked me if I wanted to do the Goldies Run 10 miler, which is the univers it's at the University of Minnesota. So I thought, hmm, I guess I could do that. So I, start, I ran a few times throughout my first semester, and then Goldie's Run is held in April. And so I started kind of running again, probably towards the end of December. And, and, that, and uh, Jessica and Anna, we had always talked in cross country about how it would be our dream to run a marathon. And so I thought, you know, if I'm gonna run 10 miles, I mean, what's 26.2, right? I'm just gonna get started on this thing. So <laughs> I slowly, I didn't really tell many people, but in the back of my head, I knew that I was gonna start training for a marathon. So I was training for this time miler and training for this marathon, and as I became more involved with my faith, I think that I really started keeping connecting with God, and I would do that when I was on my runs, and it would just become such a spiritual journey for me. Um, towards the, uh, when we got to the Goldies run, right before and right after I got injured, miraculously I was not injured for the race, and I was perfectly fine, but right before and right after I really struggled with running, and it became kind of a point for me where I didn't feel like I was going to be able to run the marathon, which was coming up in June. And so I was just kind of on this downhill swing. I had only run up to 18 miles, I think. And I mean, I thought I should at least run probably 22 by the time that I got to that marathon. So June came around, and uh, June 1st is the day that the marathon was scheduled. And I was not physically ready whatsoever. I was not mentally ready probably either. But I was pretty determined to get this thing done. But luckily for me, that morning there was like a huge storm and everything was flooding and then there was a tornado watch. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I think that was God's plan to say, hey Brandon, you can't run this marathon without putting a little work into it. So in all the blessings, that was what God did. He canceled that marathon for me. I didn't get my 80 bucks back though, which I'm still low, so. <laughs> but I got a pretty cool jacket out of it. <laughs> so I took a month off from running, um, I thought that I needed that break, and then I really like just got into it, and I hit it full force, and I was ready this time, I was ready to really be ready for that marathon. And then when October 5th came, I got in the corral, and the, the corral's like where you line up for your pace, and I tried to find my pace marker, and I was like, oh my gosh, Brandon, you're actually doing this, you are... You were absolutely nuts. You had told Jessica and Anna, that, you know, we had said we would do it one day, but you're actually about to run a freaking marathon. And at that point, it was just all in God's hands. I, I don't honestly remember a lot about the marathon. I just, I know I was in no pain, had no struggles. I ran really well. I had been shooting for a four hour marathon and ended up with going three hours and 19 minutes. And I had no idea how that came out of anywhere, but okay, I do have an idea. It was obviously God. <laughs> like, there's no explanation for that besides what God had done for me. I just think that through that all, he was there with me. Okay, but now here's how this applies to you. I wanted to write it out because I didn't want to get this wrong. So I didn't know all of the boys particularly well. Um, the one I probably knew the best was John. Um, we were mainly mostly close when we were little, probably. I remember having sleepovers at John's house. We went to a Twins game one time with Bo riding in like the trunk of the car and ducking whenever we saw police cars. <laughs> I hope there's no police officers in here. <laughs> uh, I also remember the times that he would fall asleep in college lit pretty much every day and just be drooling on his desk. <laughs> Um, I also remember the first time that I had ever slept over at somebody's house, and that was at John's house. And we didn't actually really sleep during the night, we ended up pulling an all-nighter, and when the sun rose, we were riding scooters around, and it was just kind of a really nice moment to experience. We are probably in like fourth, fifth grade maybe, and it was just one of those experiences that you're, you don't realize how much it was valuable then, but now looking back on it, 
I see it as so valuable and such a moment that I'm always going to cherish. So just because time stood still one year ago does not mean it should stand still now. Wanting to get away from this town and community because of the car accident is not the way that we should be living our life. Yes, it is going to be tough and we're going to feel John, Peyton, Tyler, and Caleb everywhere that we go, around every corner, as we're scrolling through Facebook pictures, as we're walking in the walls of the school. Um, but just because that's how it is, that means they're there with you. They will be with you wherever you go, including if you choose to stay here. I think that the accident has taught us that life is short. It brought us to our community to get together to live and grow in new ways. To live greater in our relationships, greater in our actions, greater in our faith, greater with God, and greater in love. So how do we live life without standing still? We leave this life a better place than we found it. So we love in everything that we do. Because when we love others, you know what happens? They start to love us. And then it becomes a chain reaction, and more people begin to love others, and others, and others, and it just becomes this big, great big chain reaction of love that allows us to live greater. How many of us in here have lost someone that we loved? Most of us probably know somebody, especially um, if you're older, you probably know many people that you loved. How many of us believe that they went to heaven? Right on. How many of us want to see them again? How many of us hope that the people in this gym today go to heaven? So if you all hope that, I also hope that you hope that you go to heaven. Because if you're hoping that for other people, why would you not want to go to heaven yourself to see all of those people again? What if I told you that we can? We can choose to believe in God and his teachings. We can set every problem in his hands, every complaint, every failure, and we can believe that he will lift us up. We can get rid of our temptations and unwanted desires by trusting that God will help us. You might give in to those temptations some days, but if you truly believe, you'll get through it. And if you do believe, not only will your faith become sight someday with our beloved creator and the people that you want to go to heaven, but you're going to see those loved ones too. I'll hopefully get to see my family. Because if all the people that I don't love, my mom, my dad, my family, my friends, my high school teachers, if they don't believe, this temporary life means nothing in the relationships that we created. Compared to the eternal heaven, we are guaranteed in the presence of God. So here's what I'm telling you. Live a life of faith. Don't be afraid to show your love for God. Tell your friends and family, because when you leave this earth, you don't want to leave them wondering if you believed in God and if you're going to actually going to heaven. You don't have to go to church every Sunday. You don't have to read the Bible every night. You don't even have to pray. But what I can tell you from personal experiences is that if you go to the right church, if you have the right conversations to pray about, if you find the right Bible verses that apply to your life, then you can start to trust and believe in God. Pretty soon it's going to be a little overwhelming. It isn't easy to believe. There is no proof, but there is evidence. We've seen it all around us with the four boys. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we walk by faith, but not by sight. So I have a question for you. Do you believe? Do you believe in God? Do you believe that he'll make a difference in your life? That he'll make greater relationships for you? Do you believe he'll give you greater strength and a greater ability to love? That he's going to make you greater? If you are going to live greater, tell everybody that you are going to. Tell your friends and family. Tell social media. Tell your dog. Tell your mom and dad. Tell your barn cats and your cows. <laughs> no one has ever seen God. But if we love one another... God lives in us, and his love is made eternal. That's one of my favorite verses. So if we choose to love others, and we choose to live through God to be greater, then we're going to see God someday in heaven. Now to end this, I'd like everybody to stand up for a second. If you truly believe in heaven and you truly believe that God saved you, and you think that you want to see somebody someday, reach out to them. Who are you reaching out to right now? Think about it. And let's pray for them together. 
bow your heads for a second, but keep your hands in the air. God, I pray that someday we see those beloved people that we are all looking forward to, and that the people around us also go with us. I pray that we connect with you, and that all the right words have been spoken that will bring us closer to you. We want to love you, and we want the people to be with us forever. But we know that you are eternal life, that this world is temporary, and that someday everyone with us will be with you as well. Thank you. Amen.